Hi, Happy Hoarder here, and I'm participating in the Dolls Gone Goth Clown Challenge hosted by Marna at Dolls Rescued and Jay at J Dolls UK. Thank you, ladies. You know how much I love your challenges. When I said that I was going to participate in this collaboration, I know what you were thinking. Oh, Jerry, she's going to do one of those porcelain clown dolls she's so famous for. And I do love my porcelain clowns. And they're so creepy and fun, and every one of them is completely unique. They're always fun to make, and I've made them in different sizes and shapes and personalities and creepiness as far as that goes. So. Doing the Dolls Gone Goth Clown Challenge was right up my alley, right? Not only have I done dolls, I've also done jack-in-the-boxes. And they're just as adorable and a little bit creepy, but not really dolls. Hmm. So, another thing I've done that's kind of cute are these little chubby baby dolls that I dress like clowns. So that would be kind of fun to do for this challenge, don't you think? Hmm, another idea was this little clown here. What could I do with him? Oh, well, technically he wouldn't work because he's a marionette. Yeah, but he sure is fun. I do like my clowns, obviously. I have another couple of marionettes here. They're so adorable. Look at my little babies. And then there's this guy. I don't think I want to repaint him, though. He looks kind of cool the way he is. He just has this human face. Now, one thing I could do is kind of maybe do his face a little bit. Ah, oh, my studio full of doll heads. Kind of creepy. And then back here, hidden away, there's another Jack in the Box. Hmm, I can't remember what jumps out of that one. And then there's that one in the before state. Yeah, well, I had to. But since Jack in the Boxes aren't technically dolls, I don't think they're going to work for this challenge. So. Hmm, what else do I have to work on? Oh yeah, oh yeah, another jack-in-the-box. Yeah, this guy's pretty creepy on his own, but I think one day I'm gonna add a little something to him, make him a little more special. Oh, and then there's this guy. Yeah, still not a doll, but it's kind of fun to look at when his little head is going. I can fix him up. Oh, then there's this thing. It is technically a doll. It just needs to be put back together. Oh no, not another. Well, this is actually a music box, not just a deck the box. Well, I've got this doll that I'd started working on. Yeah, she's a clown, but she's more of a parrot clown. Hmm, I'm not sure what to do. Do I want to work on her? I mean, I've already started her. Can't really decide on how I'm going to do this one, though. And then there's this La La Loopsie doll that I thrifted. Now, I took some of the paint off of her, and then I spray painted her all black, so I thought it was just a really good start. She's kind of scratched up and scuffed up, but once I started slapping some thick layers of paint on her, it really gave her a lot of character. And then, when Indiana Jones sent me some foam clay, I got a great idea that, to make her some gloves and shoes. So I sculpted these. Now this took me quite a while to work with. It is really, really soft and it gets kind of messed up easily if you just barely bump it. And sometimes the weight of its own material will just make it sag. So first I tried the three finger technique that you use on cartoons, but it just didn't look right on her because technically, you know, she is a doll and a clown and she really needed four fingers. So do go back and fix that finger. So I did both shoes originally, but what was happening, it was very hard to position these two feet because they kind of overlap each other. And with the big shoes, they were hitting each other and sticking together. Now this is the only second time I've worked with this product and I learned more this time than I did the last time because the items were a lot smaller. Now due to the thickness of this shoe I think it is better to work in layers. So to start with the base for the shoe and then maybe you know layer over where the tongue goes and then lay over again when that is dry where you know the shoes kind of build up in three or four stages and I didn't do that 
In fact, I ended up pulling off the other shoe and building that one up in stages because when it dries, it kind of hardens on the outside first and then the inside actually kind of expands. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but I lost a lot of my details. So I did learn a lot, you know, and a few tricks to, you know, make it work better next time. So I do recommend using it for stuff like this. It is really soft and it's totally different than anything you've ever used. Now, when I had set up the other hand to dry, uh, I didn't realize it had hit the table and it caused it to flatten out, but I fixed this in a little bit. And that is the shoe that I was building up. So what I did with the other shoe was um, kind of build it up slowly and one of the problems with doing it that way is that it might not be the same size when it's completely dry so I recommend doing both at the same time now I did have to fix the hill on that one I don't know what happened to that I think it had also way it rested it just kind of flattened it out so I finally got these hands straight now I let it dry I have made my little dress on the side because I just like to chill out and when I sew and I don't like to really video myself sew sewing it takes me hours and it's kind of I, I just like to that's just kind of my downtime I don't like videoing but what I did realize is that I made it kind of small in the armholes and those fingers were pretty fat but because they're soft I could kind of squeeze them through there and it went through successfully without breaking them I was really happy about that it's pretty durable I mean it can split but it's looking the fabric as far as that goes but it did hold together for this now i have not painted my hands or feet for the finished product because it needs more time to dry i just felt would feel better if it had a little bit more time because of how thick it is the fabric i'm using is actually a sundress that i had i love the colors of it i thought once i wasn't wearing it anymore i needed to save it for one of my clown costumes and i think it worked out so sweet for her little dress i like the weight of it for her size i also used the tube top part of the sundress to make her leggings so here she is and she turned out so much fun i think she's pretty cute now the ribbon that i used around for her ruffle is a very kind of a rough um, edge on it it's not finished and so it frays and i really like that I didn't realize that this little mess up on the ribbon was going to be a problem and right there in the front of course so I'm going to have to figure out a way maybe get a flat iron I don't know it may straighten itself out we'll see or spray it with something but it has a little bend in it right there and man it does not want to come out so I found some pom-poms I'm going to kind of secure those pom-poms better they're kind of pulling on the fabric that is a very lightweight fabric and it is um, something like this really kind of pulled on it I didn't think that was going to happen so I did use red because it has a lot of red in it it's just you can't see it. it's like little pieces here and there and but there is red in the fabric it's a lot of pink I don't have any pink pom-poms though so yeah the shoes I'm going to wait and paint them later might just paint them black if not maybe a pink color so i was having a little trouble with the ruffle uh and i was <laughs> just realized when i was sewing it on permanently yeah it kind of shifted right there and that got a little shorter i hand sewed this whole thing i was watching tv when i was sewing that part and i went oh what have i done here hmm yeah it's a little bit off i still need to go back and trim my inside trim up some of the seam but anyway <laughs> Yes, I enjoy doing the hand sewing because I can just kind of relax and do it while watching TV and typically not mess up as much as I do on a sewing machine. I don't know. But I love the little hands. I did the I love you hand on that side and I do need to wait until the other hand's completely dry to see if I need to add more to the finger because as this one gets harder, it did get smaller. And it does, the this foam clay reduces probably 20% when it dries so you have to prepare for that when you're making things out of it so her hair now this was I went oh yeah I forgot to go finish touching up her hair her hair was a little bit too light and I had put some yellow on it to see if I could make it a little darker and so I will after I shot this video I did go back and touch up all of her hair 
and give her a lot more yellow. I wanted it a little bit brighter. So that was just, oh, but how I did that was, you know, I painted her black and then I dry brushed the yellow over it. And then I came back with a yellow pastel and just kind of knocked it here and there to get a little bit more yellow. So yeah, I'm loving this frayed look about it. I don't want the strings to be too long, but I do like it kind of, you know, showing. And then there's, there's a little bit of red, I was just showing that. And then the blue, which is just such a cute little, it was so much fun to wear, but I always wore jacket over because I don't do tube tops very well. But I did enjoy how lightweight and fun that little sundress was. It's perfect for her. I love her little button eyes and she's all scuffed up anyway. So she just worked out perfect for this little gothic clown. I wanted her, I really wanted her to be some, wearing something a little darker. I mean, I picked a lot of the light colors out of the dress, even though it had some blacks in it. But I thought I wanted more variety in the color. But I think definitely giving her all the charcoal effects and the kind of grunge look definitely gives her that gothic look that I was going for. So she just a little bit of fun. Now I could go back and dye all this black and give her that sooty look, but you know, I really kind of like it the way it is. Now when I paint her hands and feet, I will definitely go with a little bit darker. So it'll keep that whole grunge look going. But yeah, so she's an, a lot of fun to make. I love these challenges. And I'm gonna thank Marna and Jay again for hosting them. I encourage you all to check out hashtag dolls gone gaw clowns and watch the other videos of the people who participated in this challenge. And now for her photo montage. Thank you for watching and please hit that like button and leave a comment and subscribe if you haven't and hit that notification button because sometimes I make pretty good videos and I go live on Tuesdays and Thursdays.